Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The big news this week, Michael Jackson has been found innocent of all charges. As each not guilty verdict was read out, one fan outside the court released white doves. Well, they weren't really doves. They were blackbirds with a rare skin disease. <laughs> As the verdicts are read out, an emotional Jackson reached for a tissue. You'd really think he'd have found a more tactful way of celebrating. <laughs> this week, George Bush welcomed the leaders of Ghana, Niger, Botswana, Mozambique and Namibia to the White House. Although there was an awkward moment when he said, Hey you, those lawns won't mow themselves, you know. <laughs> The US claim they can't afford more money for Africa as all the spare cash has been allocated to the defence budget by George Bush to guard against a very real threat from North Korea, Iran and, of course, the Sith. <laughs> Joining me tonight to work their way through a series of satirical games are six of the country's finest comedy performers. John Oliver, Rory Bremner and Al Murray, Joe Brand, Hugh Dennis and Frankie Boyle. Welcome to you all. Let's kick off with a round called Headliners. I show the teams a photo of someone who's been making the news mm. this week, along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. The teams have to tell me what the letters stand for. Here's a picture of Michael Jackson. But what does JFNG stand for? Is it Jackson's face needs grouting? <laughs> Jackson finds nose gone. Possibly. <laughs> Juvenile fears now grow. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> Jury found in Neverland Garden. <laughs> Jackson found near Grimsby. He's, uh, he's starting a new life. <laughs> starting a new life in Grimsby or Grimethorpe, possibly, where he, he decided to join the Colliery Band because he, he likes being near miners. <laughs> You know, he's now set up a website and a wristband that says, Make Puberty History. <laughs> <laughs> That's just for legal reasons. He was found innocent, by the way. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're not disputing that, are we? Yeah. Oh, no, I th I, actually, I think what they meant was not guilty enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, you, did you see the bit after the verdict came out when the, the announcer from the BBC went, At least Jackson can now get back to living a normal life. <laughs> <laughs> He rides out of the courtroom on a talking gorilla. <laughs> oh, it's back to normality. <laughs> but I was hoping that he'd be found guilty just so that you could see people outside with those banners saying, I love Michael, just gradually and awkwardly putting it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll just come to you. I'll leave that there. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll Slowly <laughs> taking off the one white glove. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get off. Get off. It's stuck, stuck on my hand. Don't, don't, can't it, do it. It seems all come down to that one juror that said, oh, I just didn't like the way that the mother of the boy clicked her fingers at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> and he would have actually been found guilty if he was black, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue. The J stands for Jackson. Is it found not guilty? Yes, it is, of course. The action yeah. is Jackson found not guilty. Well done, Hugh. Give him a applause. <laughs> it is, of course, referring to the news that Michael Jackson has been found innocent of the child abuse charges levelled against him. After the verdict, a tear ran down his cheek. Actually, sorry, after the verdict, a tear ran down his cheek. <laughs> <laughs> after the verdict, Michael Jackson likened himself to the Berlin Wall on his website. Well, they're both massive until the late 80s when bits started falling off them. <laughs> Michael Jackson is considering getting rid of the Neverland ranch he built in 1992, as he's 13 years old and getting a bit past it now. Q <laughs> <laughs> is the winner on that one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> our next round tonight is called Between the Lines. Rory and Hugh, can you make your way mm. to our Mock the Week press pit? In this round, one player takes the role of a famous person making a speech, while the other says what they really mean. In the light of Tory party manoeuvrings this week on the leadership, Rory, you are Michael Howard, presenting his plans to stand aside as leader of the Conservatives. Hugh, tell us what he's really saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
at the last election, we had a remarkable result. We lost. It was a tremendous achievement. We lost really badly. <laughs> but there's still a lot of work to be done. Bye then. <laughs> I'm... I'm much too old to lead the Conservative Party. Kenneth Clark is much too old to lead the Conservative <laughs> Party. I've laid out a sensible time frame for my departure. I must be back before sunrise. <laughs> We all know that there were problems with the previous system of selection for the leader. Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> this time, I hope we'll have a free and a fair fight. I'll stop David Davis if it kills me. <laughs> we need to focus on our core priorities. Can anyone remember our core priorities? <laughs> and then we'll be able to go forward, unite around a new leader and triumph at the next election. Not even I'm thinking what he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well done to both of you. Hugh Roy. I think Hugh is the winner there. <laughs> now we play a round called On the Spot, which involves everybody. So if you could all make your way over to the performance area. This is a stand-up challenge based on this random news generator dotted with topical subjects and faces. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward to try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. If I judge the player's got a big enough laugh, he or she is safe and gets to sit down again. The first team to have all its players sitting down wins the round. OK, here we go. What is the first topic? Ah, David Blunt. Oh, straight in. Uh, I'm back, uh, and this time it's personnel. Uh... <laughs> When, when the phone rang, I didn't know whether they'd offer me a job uh, or serve me with an antisocial behaviour order. <laughs> uh, Tony said, we've got a crisis, uh, and he sent me the figures, and they're the worst figures I've ever felt. Uh, <laughs> today, I will bring forward uh, daft proposals... <laughs> oh, sorry, read that again. Uh, draft proposals. <laughs> no, uh, right first time. <laughs> well done, Rory. Sit down. Thank you very much. OK, let's have another topic, please. The next topic is transport. Who wants to come in on that? Frankie. Now, I never travel by virgin trains on the principle that it's not a great recommendation if the guy who owns the train network chooses to travel by hot air balloons. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with the new toilets on trains? What was wrong with a toilet door that just locked? Now it's like this multiple choice system. <laughs> so if anything goes wrong, you're going to be sitting there while the whole wall slowly <laughs> slides away. <laughs> and you're unveiled like a prize on a quiz show. <laughs> for 500 points of shitting women. Well done, Frankie. Very good. Frankie, you can sit down. OK, let's spin the wheel again. The next topic is charity. Joe, are you going for that? All this talk of family makes you a bit peckish, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's comic relief, right? Keep asking me if I'll go out to Africa, you know, to sort of comfort people. But how are they going to feel with me getting off the plane? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> You're all hungry, are you? I've had a good dinner. <laughs> And, you know, there are just there are huge problems to be tackled in Africa. I don't know if you know this, but actually in South Africa, you can insure yourself against getting raped because if you catch the HIV virus, treatment's really expensive. And what's that going to be like? You know, you're walking along, some bloke jumps out from behind a hedge, gets his ghoulies out, and you think, oh, Christ, there goes me no-claims bonus. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Joe, please. <laughs> OK, let's have another topic. 
Topic is crime. Who's coming in that? John. The most important thing to remember about crime is that any law only makes sense in context. Look at sport. Punching someone repeatedly in the face is lauded in boxing, but is seriously frowned upon in table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, if you come out of your corner in a boxing round bouncing a little ball on a bat, it's going to be literally seconds before you're staring at some lights. Furthermore, <laughs> noses. Now, there's a man... There's a man who'd be on pretty much anyone's list of top five Jews, but think about it. When he let the children out of Israel, he was technically guilty of 3,000 counts of abducting a minor, bush arson, trespassing and abducting the sea. <laughs> and yet he walks free today. There really is no justice. <laughs> well done, John. Very good. To John. <laughs> Leaving us with two contestants. One topic we'll give you. Fight it out. Straight battle. What's the last topic this week? Ah, <laughs> uh, Chirac, Europe, let's say. Uh, Hugh, do you want to go first? Britain isn't getting on very well with France at the moment, and it is partially because the French are a bit snooty. Uh, for example, take Concorde. Do you know, in the original version of Concorde, the French had their plane built with the front hinged the other way round, so it could turn its nose up when it landed <laughs> on the front. <laughs> but the kind, of, um, the kind of European integration we don't, any of us seem to mind is town twinning. Uh, everybody wants a French, you know, town to twin with. And I didn't know how it happened, actually, until I recently went to Swindon. Uh, met a bloke from Swindon Council. He told me that apparently it's very like getting a teenage pen pal. <laughs> on the basis that Swindon was getting on very well with Monte Carlo. <laughs> until they sent them a photograph and never heard from them again. <laughs> very good, very good. Welcome to you. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> what? It is a head-to-head. -head. Uh, Al, on the topic of Europe. Uh, well, of course, the, what's happened here is the French... <laughs> <coughs> the French have voted against Europe and now expect us to cough up for it. <laughs> it's the classic example of the French attitude. They've lost the plot, basically, completely. I mean, these are people with a town called Brest and none of them think it's funny. <laughs> In any other country, a melted cheese would be regarded as a f up, wouldn't it? <laughs> they're up to something, aren't they? No, they're, well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Staying over there with their own customs. The point is, I think... <laughs> I mean, that, that Eiffel Tower is a tragic waste of Meccano, isn't it? As a result, <laughs> French boys have nothing to play with except themselves, and that's how it started, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Al, thank you very much. Thank Al Murray, give a round of applause. <laughs> Talk to say, I'm giving it to you, I'm giving it that side. Sit down, both of you. <laughs> 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 Our next round tonight is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories relating to current events. For each category, I read out an answer and the players have to guess what the question might be. John, do you want to choose? Uh, can I have home news, please? OK, the answer is ridiculously large. What is the question? <laughs> is it describe Britain's chances of winning the Olympic bid with the least appropriate phrase possible? <laughs> <laughs> Now they're saying that uh, to get us the bid, they're telling everyone that if you say you don't believe in the Olympic bid, somewhere in the world, an Olympian dies. <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, how big is the average American? <laughs> what is the name of Eddie Large's new baby? <laughs> <laughs> how big was the benefit of the doubt the jury gave Michael Jackson? <laughs> He was innocent, just for legal reasons. Uh... <laughs> How would my arse look through a telescope? <laughs> it would just look ridiculously closer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give you a clue. Uh, it's to do with Bob Geldof. What would the bids on eBay? Something to do oh, with that. That is absolutely right. Very, very good. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Um... Geldof. Geldof would be a handy man to know, though, because he can fix anything by going on the TV and shouting about it. <laughs> and I have a tumbled dryer. But... <laughs> <laughs> the belt's gone. And what would be really great is if but Geldof could go on the telly and shout a about that, and yeah. it's an outrage. For f sakes, the man's clothes are wet. <laughs> So 
you do it. He won't do anything useful about it. He'll just get a million people to get hold of your dryer and throw it into the sea. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing will actually help. He wants a million people to go round to Al's house, take his wet clothes, and run them around the garden <laughs> for two hours, <laughs> and then hand them back. Like that's the way you do it. The question I was looking for is, what kind of bids did people make on eBay in order to sabotage Live 8 ticket touts? When it was revealed that eBay was holding a number of auctions for Live 8 tickets, Bob Gelliff called the chairman of eBay an electronic pimp, which is still better than being called Fifi Trixabel. <laughs> 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 this week as well, the Boomtown Rats announced they are suing Bob Geller for unpaid royalties, although their actual words were, give us our f money. Because <laughs> they too were doing a Bob Geller impersonation when they did it. <laughs> okay. Joe, which category would you like? Can I have European news? Please? You know, for European, your category is European news. The answer is very difficult. What is the question? How do you frown when you're Anne Robinson? <laughs> <laughs> How does, uh, how does Wayne Rooney find thinking? <laughs> Is it the answer to the question, have you ever tried to shag a kestrel? <laughs> Even more difficult if they're flying, apparently. Oh, well, actually, that doesn't answer the question. That actually sounds like a yes, really. Have you ever tried to shag a kestrel? Very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> But boy, if you, if you pull it off, oh, that's a shag you'll remember for the rest of your life, yeah. Do you think that was the subtext of the film Cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's a love story. <laughs> Is it Jack Straw enjoys basic level Sudoku puzzles? What level of Sudoku puzzles <laughs> does Jack Straw tell people that he enjoys? <laughs> And if he'll lie about that, what else will he lie about? I mean, he hasn't lied about it, I've made it up, but <laughs> I think the point has to stand. You're right, the, there's no smoke without fire. Exactly, yeah. unless, unless of course, you've got a smoke machine, but still, <laughs> the, yes, yeah, yeah. the, there the is, point stands. There is rarely smoke without fire, I meant to say, yes. at that stage. Yeah. Well, yeah. not if you've got a toaster, I find. <laughs> How easy is it to set fire to a swimming pool? <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's to do with a, with a rocky relationship. Well, Anglo-French relations. It is, essentially. How are they doing? The question I was looking for is, how did Tony Blair describe negotiations between France and Britain over the EU? It refers to Tony Blair's ongoing row with Jacques Chirac, who wants Britain to reduce its rebate. Talks between Blair and Chirac collapsed on Tuesday night, leaving Anglo-French relations at their lowest ebb since Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> Lays out the winner of that round. I think it has to be Al. I'll give it that for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> this next round is our version of Question Time called Ask the Politicians. I'll play the host. Joe, Frankie and John, if you could move up among the audience, please. Ready to ask your questions to the politicians sitting at the front here. You could move in. Rory, you're Tony Benn. Hugh, you're a Tory spokesman. And Al, you're the voice of the silent majority. <laughs> Can we have our first audience question from, I think, the intense Scottish man there, please? Yes. Can I ask the panel what single law they would introduce to make Britain a better place? Tony, Ben, would you like to come in on that? Well, you see, straight away, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do a single law because I'd say a lot of laws because that's got an S in it. But, um, <laughs> but the best law, I would say, was Andrew Boner Law, who was a Conservative minister and became Chancellor of the Exchequer in 1910. Wonderful person. I met him, and I met him the first time. And he, he was the first person who got me interested in politics. But, but the answer to the question, uh, Mr. Ben, if you could possibly... Well, you see, there we go. We're concentrating on personalities, not on issues. Uh, I think that's completely wrong, and I'll come back to you later. <laughs> OK. Um, uh, Hugh? No foreigners. <laughs> Is that what you'd say? Well, I think it's time for the decent, honest, hard-working, law-abiding, tax-paying, normal, sensible, reasonable, down-to-earth, hard-working, normal, law-abiding, down-to-earth, sensible, reasonable people, <laughs> hard-working, law-abiding, tax-paying, fleeced, decent, honest, hard-working, law-abiding, normal, decent, reasonable, sensible, law-abiding, normal, hard-working people of this country who don't want to pay their speeding fines, <laughs> regardless of... <laughs> Regardless of how fast we may have been going, the wrong way up the slip road, on a phone, no seatbelt, no tax, no MOT, no insurance, whilst eating a burger and receiving oral sex on the telephone. <laughs> have you got anything better to do, officer? It's time for us... <laughs> ..to speak! <laughs> and... <laughs> ..bring...
bring back Angie, obviously. <laughs> Let's go to our second question. The uh, swarthy Greek lady uh, on that side there, please. <laughs> yes? Oh, thanks. Uh, I was just wondering that as Britain chairs the European presidency, what changes should we be making? And uh, would anyone like some falafel? <laughs> <laughs> falafel to an event? Well, I've never falafel in my life, and, I don't know <laughs> and the European Union? Uh, well, I've never been a fan of the European Union. I think it'd be a very good thing if Britain were towed away into the North Sea, a little bit further away. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's strange. It's the first time I've ever agreed with anything you've ever said, mate. Right? As a well, you've obviously not been listening. No, that's all no, I can say. <laughs> I've been listening, I've simply chosen to remain silent up until now. <laughs> well, I must say, you're very vocal. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm the voice of the silent majority. Well, I must say, obviously, having said that, I'm no longer a member, but... <laughs> the point... <laughs> I think European Union change your name to the British Empire as a mark of gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> Call a euro and a pound, right? And new kit. <laughs> Doug, you surely would possibly agree with that? I feel, really, the very best thing to do would be to move the European Parliament to the Millennium Dome. They're both a waste of money. It'd be good to get them both lumped together. <laughs> OK. The lady there in the, uh, in the middle. Uh, you have a question? Indeed. Now that um, Cub Scouts don't have to swear allegiance to the Queen and God anymore, um, who do the panel think that they should swear allegiance to? Tony Bell. I think you have to go a long way to beat Clement Attlee. <laughs> 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 you look at the 1945 <laughs> Labour Manifesto, it's a poem. It's a wonderful poem, absolutely, and Clement is... But surely there has to be something more contemporary than that. <laughs> We're talking about socialism, I understand. <laughs> uh, so I think if you wanted to put something contemporary in socialism, we'd have to go back a long way. But, uh, no, I, I, uh, or Asquith. <laughs> Asquith, OK. <laughs> After your Asquith? I, personally, have sworn allegiance to a Cub Scout. <laughs> 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 He's absolutely lovely, and he does marvellous things with his woggle. <laughs> <laughs> One phone call, you're on a register. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you uh, pledge allegiance to? Voice of the silent majority? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking for the people who would have shot that burglar a third time... <laughs> He shouldn't have done that anyway. He should have dug a pit with steel spikes and manure on the spikes and a rug on the top. In comes the burglar, falls in. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> <laughs> now, who would I swear allegiance to? Yeah. Well, in fact, oh, this is nonsense. It's got to be the Queen. I've got to go back to the Queen. And I love the royal family. Not just out of my disloyalty. <laughs> <laughs> if not that, then what? I fancy her. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dirty, those German birds, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> follow the, the rules of etiquette when meeting the royal family? What are you talking about? I recently discovered that one is not meant to turn one's back on the Queen. I, I don't understand. She's very unlikely to nick anything. <laughs> <laughs> we feel this discussion may go on all night, so instead let's wrap it up and say thank you to all the panelists. The winner was Al on that particular game. <laughs> Can you come from the audience? <laughs> And now we come to our final round. It's called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. So if you're all ready, here we go with the very first of these. Bad ways to start a party political broadcast. Hello. <laughs> 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 My fellow paedophiles... <laughs> Hang on, I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> Good night! <laughs> As you know, the football is on the other channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry to say that it is mostly the blacks. <laughs> I'm John Prescott. Now, I expect you're wondering why I'm ah. making... <laughs> I think our policies are best expressed... ..in song! Ah. 
During the next three and a half hours. <laughs> now, look, we all know we're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Death to the West. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what the voices in my head are telling me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, our next topic is... Things you'd never hear a French person say. Of course, it looked hopeless, but we kept fighting. <laughs> I'd like a bottle of Burgundy and a Dairy Lee Dunker, please. <laughs> You're English. How nice to meet you. <laughs> J'aime beaucoup, Monsieur Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> I've just bought a wonderful little holiday home in the south of Birmingham. <laughs> <clears throat> My favourite road? Well, that's got to be the A303. <laughs> Nice. In many ways, it's quicker than the M4, and you get to go past Stonehenge. <laughs> if you're going London to the West Country, it's A303 for me every time. <laughs> what a road. What a road. <laughs> and we throw that part of the animal away. <laughs> <laughs> OK, our next topic is what the voices in Tony Blair's head are saying. You will obey! <laughs> Keep smiling, have Gordon killed. Keep smiling, <laughs> have Gordon killed. <laughs> Cherie, will you shut the f up? Okay. <laughs> oh, look, there's Cherie. That reminds me, I must post a letter. <laughs> <laughs> I like big butts and I cannot laugh. <laughs> I wonder what John Prescott looks like in hot pants. <laughs> <laughs> Mustn't get a stiffy. <laughs> Damn it, got a stiffy. <laughs> Go on, lie. You got away with it last time. <laughs> well done, everyone. All come back and sit down. That is the end of the show. This week's winners are Joel Brown, Hugh Dennis and Frankie Boyle. Commiserations to Al Murray, Roy Bremner and John Oliver. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Until next week, good night. Well, from one extreme to the other, the complexity of life in a small French community. Stay with us here on 2 for a fond and fascinating portrait of a local schoolteacher.